Before I get into this video, I want to remind you that we are on our road to 133,000 subscribers to match 133 years of Nintendo. So I would appreciate if you hit the subscribe button and drop a like on this video. Also, maybe leave a comment below letting me know your favorite piece of news from today's batch because we've got like six or seven stories coming your way. Also, we have a giveaway going on right now for a Hylian Shield replica, two Tears of the Kingdom, Zelda Switch OLEDs, and two Zelda Collector's Editions. These giveaways are actually a kickoff giveaway for Prime Gaming Fest next week more details on that to come thank you guys so much you can enter down in the pinned comment or in the description and let's get into today's news so our first story today deals with splatoon 3 version 4.0.0 it dropped a couple days ago and we have a lot to go over in this so bear with me timestamps down below if you want to skip to the other stories so there are so many bug fixes that it would probably be a 30 minute video just to go over them all but yeah there was a lot of bug fi fixes and it's obviously nice to see them be addressed so starting today the sizzle season 2023 has been added to the game and it includes a new catalog including new gear titles splash eggs decoration stickers and emotes a new battle stage called barnacle and dime a returning battle stage from splatoon 2 called humpback pump track two new main weapons nine new sets of existing main weapons paired with different sub and special weapons a new salmon run stage called jam and salmon junction and 11 new table turf battle cards they did have some changes to multiplayer including adding three new songs that play during battle a new main weapon has been added as well these weapons are available at the shop starting today because sizzle season 2023 is kicked off this includes the s blast 92 the pain brush the splatter shot nova the h3 nozzle nose d the Rapid Blaster Pro Deco, the Custom Dually Squelchers, the Light Tetra Duallys, the Splatana Wiper Deco, and the Tetra Sorella Umbrella. Some combos of stuff have been changed for current weapons in the game too. They made it so players cannot super jump to a teammate's position in tower control mode, that when the teammate jumped from a tower in a wall, their current position is separated from the position of the tower, and that would have been a super jump destination in the past. Made it so when certain conditions are met, two players on the winning team who make great efforts will be celebrated with each other's brave fighting after performing their victory emotes. They made it possible to select from two different ink colored combinations when color lock is enabled. Color lock combinations number one is close to the previous setting. When battling with two teams the colors will remain the same as with color lock was that was enabled in version 3.1.1. During tricolor turf war the colors will remain the same as when color lock was enabled back in version 1.2.1 or earlier. Color lock combination number two is a greater adjustment that provides support for cases where it's still difficult to play with color lock enabled previously. The color combination will be different from when the color lock was enabled previously, both when battling with two teams and during tricolor turf war battles. They adjusted the animation when a repin in Oculus emote was performed with a splatling equipped. And I don't know why I have a problem saying Inkopolis, but there you go. Changes to challenges. Data relating to a new multiplayer mode called challenges has been added. Challenges are limited time battles with special rules. They can also serve as online tournament qualifiers. Players can participate in solo or form a group with friends and join together. Challenges can be broken up into as many as three time slots so that players from various regions can join. Each time slot will be two hours long. As players battle, their challenge power will be calculated, which changes based on the player's wins and losses during the time slot. Challenge power will be calculated individually for players who participate solo and as a group for players joining as a group. If a group's members change, the group will be considered new and the challenge power will be recalculated. Once a certain amount of time has passed since the end of the challenge, players will be able to check the lobby terminal to see how high their challenge power was overall. Challenge power distribution is measured in three divisions as solo, duos, and teams. Three player groups are considered as part of the team's division. They made it possible to use the shellout machine with shellout tokens. Players who win five battles within a challenge will receive a shellout token. Players can only earn one shellout token per challenge. Now there was changes to anarchy battles as well. They made it so anarchy power will be calculated for your team as a whole when participating in anarchy battle open with friends. Anarchy power changes based on wins and losses and is reset when modes or stages switch. If a group's members change, the group will be considered new. Once a certain amount of time has passed since the mode or stage switch, players will be able to check the lobby terminal to see how high their anarchy power was overall. Anarchy power distribution is measured in two divisions, duos and teams. Three player groups are considered part of a team's division. Greatly change the matchmaking mechanism in anarchy battles, open to improve matchmaking efficiency.
Legend Seaford groups of two players. Made it possible to select change, great, then go after the battle ends in Anarchy Battle. This allows players to group a change gear while maintaining the group. Made it so that selecting stop after a battle ends will return players to the awaiting ready state instead of forcing them to leave the room when participating in Anarchy Battle with a group of friends. Changes to Salmon Run! Specifications for the main weapons have changed. All right, they doubled the number of fish scales normally obtained after fighting the King Salmonid in Big Run. Made it possible to join extra work solo when players join solo. A weapon that does not overlap with the other players will automatically be selected from the weapons available in the round of extra work. When joining extra work with a group of fewer than four players will be gathered so that it becomes a four player attempt. Players with similar high scores during the round of extra work or similar regular job ratings will be gathered. Made it so that when a player joins an extra work group, a weapon that does not overlap with players who are ready to participate is initially selected. Made it clear when it is not possible to select ready because a player has joined an extra work group and selected a weapon that overlaps with another player. Made it so that friends and members of the same pool will be notified when you set a new hide score in big rung or extra work. They adjusted the position where normal power eggs when a salmonid is hit with an attack so that they appear from the position where the attack hit. They made it so the total number of golden eggs deposited and total number of normal power eggs obtained both display when viewing recent jobs at the Grizzco Industries and they made it so that newly added items available for trade using fish scales are clearly marked. They also made some changes to tabletop turf battle including increasing the table turf rank limit to 999. They adjusted the results announcement screens animation to make the winner more clear. Made it possible for players to check their own deck or give up after placing a card and waiting for the opponent to make a decision. Made it easier to distinguish between cards in the deck and cards not in the deck while on the deck editing screen and so much more. We'll have a link down in the description so you can get a look at all of the changes in 4.0.0. They also made changes to the lobby overall with adding those three songs that play in the lobby. They supported room creation feature of Splatnet 3 which is pretty cool. They made it possible to send notifications inviting players to join the group as many times as desired. They made it possible to select put away when grabbing a shelf or locker organizer and a whole bunch of other stuff. This update focuses on adding features for Sizzle Season 23 which started today as well as adding challenges and Anarchy Battle open features. It also adjusts the balance of battles and Salmon Run. Regarding the challenges, we have implemented the features of the League Battles from Splatoon 2 separately. In terms of battle adjustments, we've made new main weapons, powered up some special weapons, and made adjustments to certain other weapons, etc. 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 Guys, there is so much in this update, because it's such a massive update, and starting a brand new event, a brand new event season here, the Sizzle Season. You guys go ahead and enjoy all of that in Splatoon 3. Some of these changes might actually impact what we do during Prime Gaming Fest, so I'm pretty excited excited about that. And let's get into our next story because rejoice! Famitsu has stated that a number of highly anticipated third-party games are going to release on Switch this year. This is according to a now-deleted post over on the Gaming Leaks and Rumors Reddit, but it's already been verified that, yeah, Famitsu did actually say this. So why it's been deleted, I don't know. It was from a panel they held on the economic state of the video game industry. This stuff has been proven true when they've made statements like this in years past, meaning that they do have sources on this. But obviously, due to NDA reasons, they're not just going to tell us what is coming, right? But we can sort of make some educated guesses. There's a couple things we do know are coming third-party-wise to Switch, you know, big third-party-wise to Switch. We have things like, you know, Mortal Kombat 1 that's already been announced, you know, stuff like that. Maybe, you know, Hogwarts Legacy, that's another one. But beyond all of that, there's other IPs people were maybe thinking that could be big major IPs coming to Switch. Things like Yakuza or the Persona 3 remake. Maybe Guilty Gear Survive or some of those Metal Gear Solid games they're bringing back. Famitsu, again, won't elaborate on any of this, but it is nice to dream about what big third-party games could still be coming to Switch this year. Now, moving on to our next story, Nintendo of Canada has teased more booster courses as coming pretty soon when it comes to, well, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. So they put this up a couple days ago and they said, it's mom and dad's time to shine when it comes to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Can you show off your skills at family game night or will you be the one to fall behind? Then it goes, psst, more courses are coming to Mario Kart eight deluxe booster course pass soon now what does soon mean i mean if you're reggie fusume it can mean any time in the next three months but we know there's two more to come maybe there's going to be another drop in june who knows is it going to announce it direct do they just shadow drop it randomly on some random tuesday in the middle of june beats the hell out of me but uh it does sound like possibly this month we have our next wave 
Coming from the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC. Moving on, we have some updates here on Tears of the Kingdom. First off, we have the update on the launch sales for Tears of the Kingdom in Spain. It sold 170,000 units at launch in Spain, and 12,000 of those were the collector's edition. That is the second largest game launch in Nintendo Switch history in Spain, behind only Scarlet and Violet, which sold 200,000 units at launch. It's already the third best-selling Zelda game ever with this limited data, behind Twilight Princess and Breath of the Wild. Tears of the Kingdom sales in Japan are also still spectacular, with, again, another 170,000-plus units moved last week. And the Switch continues to dominate the sales charts, and it's utterly incredible the overall sheer dominance the Switch platform has had in Japan over the last six years. Now, speaking of Tears of the Kingdom, a speedrunner has now actually beat the game in under an hour, and these times are going to keep getting quicker and quicker and quicker. Uh, but the first person to get it under an hour was speedrunner ZDI, who pulled it off in an any percent run at 59 minutes and 22 seconds. This stuff's going to keep getting quicker and quicker. We don't really know where the bottom out time is going to be, but uh, hey, this is the first sub one hour run to get to end credits. Any percent means they can use glitches and anything else. It doesn't really matter. So you can go ahead and watch the run if you want. Obviously, it contains spoilers specifically for the end of the game. Moving on, Mario has now surpassed 1.288 billion at the box office, passing up Frozen to become the number two highest grossing box office anime film of all time behind only Frozen 2. But you could still argue it's number three. If you look uh, you know, around, people sometimes count the 2019 remake of Lion King. <sighs> it was technically all animated, but Disney doesn't call it an animated film. So there is that. So some people will say that Mario's number two. Some will say it's number three. I don't know. The fact that it just passed Frozen is just mind boggling to me. And uh, let's see if it can get to Frozen 2. It's still got a bit to go. I don't know how much longer it's going to remain in theaters, but uh, it has a shot to potentially g catch Frozen 2. Now, our last story is an update on something we've been talking about for a little bit, and that is about the Sonic the Hedgehog creator Yuji Naka. So Yuji Naka was busted for insider trading, and this in Japan is a much steeper penalty than it is here in the United States. Although it's illegal worldwide, Japan takes this very, very seriously, and he was busted on multiple accounts of this insider trading and fully admitted to it, copying to basically doing it entirely when he worked at Square Enix, and he traded over a million dollars in stocks. He had a bunch of inside information on when games are going to drop and bought and traded stocks based on that information. That's essentially what he's guilty of doing to create massive profits for himself. The prosecution is seeking two and a half years in prison with a total penalty of $1.2 million to be paid. The defense, of course, has asked for the fine to be reduced, but also for the prison time to be suspended or dropped altogether. But the prosecutors haven't backed down, and they're saying that Yuji Naka has shown absolutely zero remorse for anything that he did. So... They really want that prison time to stick because they think, hey, if this guy's going to learn anything, the money penalty might not be enough. He's made a lot of money in his career. We need the prison time. Like, we need to discourage this insider trading. If we can't get prison time for insider trading, then, you know, how are we really going to stop it? So we have no idea what the outcome of this is going to be. Obviously, with the legal process, it always takes months and months and months, sometimes years. So we're just going to have to let this play out. It is kind of a crappy story to find out the creator of Sonic the Hedgehog is kind of this sort of shady guy doing shit shady things, but what are you going to do? It's life, and all we can do is look at ourselves and ask, are we making good choices today? So, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime. Hopefully you enjoyed all of that news, getting caught up on the latest going on in the world of Nintendo, and I'll catch you in the next video.